Now, to understand the basis of a rain head design, we're going to use the dam buster rain head as an example. So, here's a dam buster rain head that's just been mounted. So, the front elevation, plain elevation, you can't see any overflows and and if we take a look from the bottom that's what the design is all about that slot is the overflow design and that's where the downpipe goes so that's the sump where the downpipe is attached and that is the overflow slot so you can see the overflow slot from ground level but at a horizontal level there's nothing on any of the faces all right let's look at the mentioning this is the width of the box cutter that's the shape of the box cutter and the idea is that the box cutter will rest on this sole plate and then discharge into the rain head so let's do some dimensions so if you look at this the width of the the width of the box cutter is 200. Now, the code says that for residential buildings, 200 is the minimum width of the box cutter. So this complies in a residential instance. So this particular rainwater head cannot be used in a commercial roof situation because on a commercial roof, the width of the box cutter has got to be a minimum of 300 millimeters. This is obviously an indication of the depth of the box cutter and it's 200. So we've got a 200 by 200 dimension and that's nominally the size of the box cutter that's going to discharge into this rainwater head. So as we look into the inlets of the rainwater head, We've got to consider some design principles. One thing to take into consideration is the depth of the rainwater head. Now, the depth is determined by how much water is coming in, in other words, the flow, and how big the downpipe is. So this distance here, the depth, and it's really the depth to the overflow, is determined by how much water comes in from the design and how big the nozzle is. And the reason is that maximum flow in a downpipe is achieved when you have a certain amount of water above the mouth of the downpipe. So that's why the depth matters because you have to have a certain level of water so that you have the pressure to give it the maximum discharge through this particular downpipe. Now, the other measurement that has to be taken into consideration is this dimension. You either call it the width or the length. Now, the reason why this is critical is that if you install your box cutter with, with say, a 60mm extension into the rain head, this is where the end of the box cutter will spill water. So there's this thing called nuisance spilling is that if this width is not wide enough, what happens is that when you have a little bit of rain, when water starts to spill over, if this is not wide enough, then the water will actually spill over the overflow weir. And in light rain, water goes out the overflow, and that's not what you need. So this distance has got to be wide enough so that when the water runs during normal rain, it flows down into this receptacle and not over into the overflow slot. And there's one critical measurement in here that the code requires, and that is that overflow weir is 25 millimeters below that level. So right across, there's a 25 millimeter height difference between the sole of the box cutter and the overflow weir. So that distance is 25 millimeters. Now, what's neat about a design like this, this entryway into the rain head, is that you have a flange 
on either side. And you have the depth of the box cutter here that will hide the penetration in the wall. So imagine if you cut a hole in a wall for the rain head and the hole starts from, from here or from here, right? so the hole's got to be bigger than the box cutter. What you have is this little extension here actually hides the hole. So if this is where the edge of your hole is, then this physically hides it because you can't actually see the gap. And also what this entry piece allows the roofer to do is when the box cutter comes in, there is a flat surface in which to seal and screw on both sides and at the sole so that you can have a fully sealed joint between the rain head and the box cutter that comes out. Which means that this is totally waterproof. And there's this little tab in here on the other side that allows you to screw or to attach the rain head to the wall. And this may or may not be the permanent fixture, but initially what you need to do is to be able to hold the rain head in place by putting fixings on either side. And once the rain head is in place, then you can install your box cutter and do all the work at the joint between the box cutter and this inlet into the rain head so that everything becomes waterproof. And once this is done, then you can consider that the rain head becomes part of the box cutter, not a separate element. And this is the concept behind this design, how this rainwater head is designed. It's designed to be integrated into the end of a box cutter that discharges water from the end. But if you've understood the purpose of a rainwater head, then you will know that there are other means of achieving the same purpose. This rainwater head does not have to be part of the box cutter. This can be a separate piece. So if you design a rain head that is not integrated into the box cutter, then you've got other considerations to take into account. And I guess the main consideration is that you've got a penetration in which the box cutter protrudes and you've got to have a means of blanking off that penetration on the edge in here. And the reason is that you don't want any water to go back through the wall and leak into the house. So you've got to have to do other work to make sure that the penetration is blanked off. And if you do that, then this can be a separate element. So you can, in theory, put the, uh, the box cutter invert higher. You don't have to seal the box cutter to the inlet at all. Uh, you can use a different style of rainwater head. But you have to realise that when the rain head fills up, it'll go through the overflow or through the back. And when the water goes through the back, if you haven't got the box cutter integrated with the rainwater head, then there's a gap in there where the water can go back through the house. So you've got to have a plate behind there that's sealed to the underside of this so that water doesn't get in. So it gets quite complicated. So there are other ways to achieve the same result and comply with the code, obviously. Um, but we've looked at the basics of a rainwater head design and this has been quite a handy example to show how thought has been put into designing a rain head that works according to the standards. Now that we've looked at the two different types of rain heads available, some of you may ask, well, can we do away totally with rainwater heads? Surely that's gonna be a cleaner look. You get a house that's got no boxes around the perimeter. And the answer is yes, you can eliminate rainwater heads, but you cannot eliminate the overflow. So if you have a box cutter, what you need to have is you've got a box cutter and then you've got a section where the water is going to be discharging into a downpipe. And where the box cutter empties into a downpipe, you still need a transitional device. And that transitional device is called a sump. So it's basically a box. So where you've got the downpipe, 
the water comes off the box cutter, drops down into a box called a sump, and at the sump, at the base, you've got the downpipe, and that will then go internally and get drained to the ground and into the stormwater system. So everything's all hidden. But off this sump, you still need a slot to come out of the side of the house. So at the location of the sump, if you look at the wall, you'll see another Ned Kelly slot. Then you say, well, that's not quite a good look. Well, you can actually put a baffle plate above the Ned Kelly slot so that you don't see the slot. You see a bit of a, a like, like a cover over, this, over the slot. Now that can be done. So the answer is you can do without rainwater heads, but then it's also a trade-off. Now, I don't like the idea of using a sump with a overflow from the sump and internally routed downpipes. Because I believe all downpipes should be external to the building. If something happens to the downpipe and it's internally routed, then you've got a problem. There'll be a leak from the downpipe only way you can get to fix it is to demolish an element in the house where the downpipe is hidden and try to do a repair. So I think we're just stuck with rainwater heads. And here in Sydney, you've got the choice of using the ACE rainwater head, but you need to know the limitations and what you need to do to make this particular rain head comply. The other option is to use something like the Dam Busters rain head which complies and has a particular look. A lot more intricate and a lot more expensive. So rainwater heads are still the way to go. You just need to know how they should be installed. So they actually work.